This is awesome. Do you guys have a uh, like a like a degenerate budget or like a learner budget where it's like, okay, this is my fuck around with money that I can I can try different things, or do you guys not do that? Sam, you're shaking your head. No, I don't. But, uh, but do you? It sounds like you do. I do. Yeah. How much? Uh, well, let's talk about like in percentage terms. So it's like you know what would that be? It's like. Close. No, don't do percentage terms. Like literally, how much? <laughs> like, are you, like fifty thousand dollars? No, more than that. Uh, wow. Yeah, for sure. And so, what will you do with that? What's an example of your of of a dumb of a risky thing that you've done? Uh, like, <laughs> I think I've told this story before, but I remember watching. A, so the the idea with these is, um, I'll just tell the story first. I watched a YouTube video of this guy. No idea who this guy is. Uh, some Wall Street, some some hedge fund guy. Basically, he's a prolific short trader. Is kind of like the vibe I got from this video. Couldn't tell you how tall couldn't was. Couldn't tell he? you his name. Couldn't tell you what his track record was. Uh, white guy looked reasonable enough, and uh, he basically was like, he's like, yeah, I'm. A, he's like, my short pick of the year is Tootsie Roll, and, uh, <laughs> and all these, I was like, well, I was listening. I was like, why? What Tootsie Roll? I didn't even realize it's a public stock. He's like. Tootsie Roll. He's like, first of all, who the hell eats Tootsie Rolls? He's like, do you think Tootsie Roll is growing? He's like, no. The people who eat Tootsie Rolls are like, you know, 50 and up. They're, they're a dying market. Kids don't want Tootsie Roll nowadays. They want like all these other candies. He's like, Tootsie Roll has zero innovation. They refuse to change their product. And um, they don't come out with anything new. He's like, and then it's also poorly run and not going to be sold. It was like owned by some woman who was like, I think it's owned by like a 92 year old yeah, lady. She passed away now, but at the time, this was like five years ago or something like that. Like uh, that, that this happened. I don't know when this was. This was, it was a while back. And um, I remember watching that video and I was like, oh, this guy's totally right. Tootsie Roll's fucking dead. And I went that day and I bet against Tootsie Roll. I made a bunch of money just on this like zero thought process, zero diligence. Like just like take a, take a punt and, uh, you know, do something on a whim. And so that was the first time I realized like, Actually, I want a designated budget. And with crypto, this has become like, you know, kind of a necessity. With crypto, you basically have like, you have so many new things that are all interesting and you can't get to high conviction because they're new, it's rapidly evolving, like the opportunities in front of you today. And so you don't have time to diligence all these. You don't have time to get to high conviction, but you do know like where, you know, you can sort of sense certain signals. Like if a bunch of smart people are looking at it, um, if you see, you know, developer activity in that space, if the premise is like, you know, interesting. It might hit, might not hit, whatever. You, you can basically take punts on things in crypto and you get paid off. Unlike the stock market, right? Like I think on the Tootsie Roll thing, I made like, I don't know, 20, 35%, something like that. In crypto, you can make like 20X when you're right on these things. And so with crypto, the, the odds just shift in your favor where, yeah, it's super fast moving and things can go to zero. But the the upside when you hit is so high, it pays for all of your other bad bets. And so I basically created a budget because I was like, I can't, um, I can't overthink this. I need to, I need to intentionally underthink this. So what does that mean? It's like, there's been, in the last five years, there's been so many examples of things that I've, I've come across my radar in crypto that I don't take action on because I feel like I don't have enough information to make an educated decision. And actually, if I had just made uneducated decisions, I would have done far better than my like educated decisions turned out to be because the space is just, um, where there's a lot of progress being made and you, you can't keep up with all the different projects, all the different tokens. So I basically set out a budget where I said, if somebody tells me something that's interesting, I have money that I could just like dump into that. It's a small amount of money. I don't care if that money, that money goes to zero and I'm not putting it all into one. So I'm taking like a portfolio of these and I, let's just see what that happens. And in doing so, I get to actually learn how these things work. Um, and so, you know, like uh, I did one the other day and I put it in the milk road explaining literally step by step what this what this project was and why I'm why I'm going into it and how I have no idea if this is like a great idea a bad idea I didn't audit the security of the project like I don't have time for all that I'm just like trying to learn how these things work and I'm putting small bets in a bunch of different areas with money that I'm I can afford to lose do you do that stuff so I don't Cal does uh, I think it's smart though because like Sean saying these are the type of investments where like if you don't have money sequestered for this it's gonna it's going to capture your psychology. That's actually why I don't dabble in these things. But uh, he's done that a lot for NFTs, right? So at first he was like, Steph, I'm just going to buy one. Obviously, he's bought, and bought more since then. But he he has a certain amount. And like that's all he's willing to invest. If it goes to zero, he's happy with it. Um, but he's also probably sold a lot too early because he has a 
concentrated amount. So he's like, oh, I got to sell this to buy another thing. Uh, Sean, did you get into proof? I feel like that was a big. No, I, did, I didn't do uh, proof. One of these, like, that's, a, that's a great example of one where I'm like, oh, interesting. Kevin Rose is doing this NFT thing. I should, uh, I should, you know, I should just take a punt, right? Like it's, I, I'm seeing this before most people. Um, I should go in and like, again, like with these things, it's not going to, it's not like going to go to zero, quote unquote. It's like, you know, so I can trade out of the thing if I want to in, you know, three months from now. But like to weigh each, to, I don't want every decision to be heavy. And, um, and I, you, have you guys seen this meme? That's like the, it's like the curve. I think it's called like the midwit meme. It's basically like, there's an idiot on one side. There's a genius, like a. Like, so the, on one side is the idiot. He looks like a troll. He looks like you know, like whatever Shrek. And on the other side, there's like a Jedi master. And then the middle, which is like the top of the curve, is like the average person. And it's like, uh, you know, like for example, like oh, like the idiot would be like, oh, that monkey looks like that's a cool looking monkey. I'll buy. All right. The, the genius is like, oh, this you know, this has a chance to be an iconic, you know, like like whatever iconic NFT. Buy. I like, didn't think about it more than that. And then the like middle guy is like, you know, but why would anybody buy this picture of a monkey? And like, how, how do the tokenomics work? And they like try to like analyze the whole fucking thing. And they're a, they're just paralyzed. That's some sort of analysis paralysis where they don't, they don't take action on anything. And then they overthink things. So they miss the, like the big, simple opportunities that are in front of them a lot of times.